Hello fellow content consumers, this is Cameroni here with a leak start video for Ice Nova Frost Bolts um, for the upcoming 3.24 Necropolis patch for Path of Exile. Try and get through this build guide video faster than previous build guide videos. Uh, jumping right into this, um, I have made a path of building. This is the same one that I used last league but updated. Um, it's got different passive trees here for different um, areas of the game. When you get through Acts 5 through 10, you can see how it changes here. When you get to early maps, etc. Same with skills. I've got ones for the campaign, what you want your skills to look like for early maps, late maps, and then if you decide to go into the low life version of the build, there's that as well. And then same for items. I've got different items here for what you want to look for. And then I've got a pretty extensive notes section here uh, for different things to look out through for through the campaign, through maps, etc. One thing that I want to just make a note of real quick, the rare gear that you see in this is just an example. These are stats that you want to look for as you're picking up items off the ground, going through the campaign, the axe, etc. Just want to make a note real quick. This is for the occultist version of this build. You can also do Hierophant early on, especially through the Axe and early maps. The passive tree will be almost exactly the same. Uh, it's just when you get to end game that it starts to differ, when you get Pledge of Hands, when you start doing mana stacking shenanigans, etc. on Hierophant. <clears throat> um, I'm not going to make a, a League Start build guide specifically for Hierophant, since I prefer Occultist. But later on, definitely I will be doing a Hierophant Ice Nova build with the new unique helmet. I'm also contemplating doing either a Berserker or a Chieftain version of the build and convert Ice Nova to Fire. We'll see. I'm theory crafting that right now. Alright, so jumping into the build, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of how the, the build works. This is gear I used through the campaign that I just picked up off the ground. Wanted to see how it does with some slightly upgraded gear, like what you can get reasonably by tier 16 maps. Uh, just to see how this build does with slightly higher budget. I'm guessing this is probably like a divine, maybe two divines worth of worth of stuff that you probably won't buy other than other than the wand. Uh, so how this build works, I don't know if, if you haven't watched my previous build guides. Um, essentially, what you're doing is you're casting out Frostbolt early on. Volley's better. You can use greater multiple projectiles once you have more AOE, but cast out Frostbolt, and then you cast Ice Nova on the Frostbolt. And I'm reusing Spell Echo, which normally when you use Spell Echo, you have to stop moving when you use Spell Echo, but instead it echoes off of the Frostbolt, so you're doing twice as much damage as you would without Spell Echo. If I run over here and just start casting Ice Nova, you can see that I stop in place while it casts it twice. And I don't stop at all when I cast it. On Frostbolt. That's the main appeal. It also casts and echoes off of Frostbolt four times. So for a single cast of Ice Nova, you're actually getting eight casts of Ice Nova off the Frostbolts, increasing your damage by eight times. If you're following this League Start build guide just to get through the axe, get decently into maps, or even finish out your, your Atlas, I would recommend breaking off sometime around either before you get all of these late game uniques or after them. With these late game uniques, you're able to clear your atlas easily, you're able to do every pinnacle boss, you're probably able to get all or most of your favored map slots, and then you can roll into something else. <clears throat> um, if you're just looking to get through the atlas, you don't need all of these uniques, all you need is a good wand and a six link and some decent gear for survivability. Now I want to cover a few important breakpoints with this build. Uh, things to look out for. Act 3, uh, when you run the first lab, that's your first opportunity to get Ice Nova Frost Bolts. Try and get that if at all possible. It makes going through the campaign much faster and much easier. Not required by any means. You can still go through the campaign with normal Ice Nova and with a 3 or 4 link Frost Blink be able to get through it pretty quick. 
It just makes the bosses take a lot longer. Um, if you don't get Ice Nova Frostbolt from the lab, you can also try and go for another gem there and sell it or trade it for Ice Nova Frostbolt. Might be able to get a Chaos Orb sometime around Act 3, Act 4. Hopefully Ice Nova Frostbolts won't be too expensive and depending on how popular this League Start video is, it might be really expensive and in really high demand. We'll see. Um, next one is Act 4 when you get Spell Echo. This is especially true for if you're running Ice Nova Frostbolts. At this point, <clears throat> Spell Echo will more than double your mana cost, so you'll be wanting to run a fairly high level Clarity and have mana regen nodes allocated in the passive tree. Um, this one here, and this one here. And then you'll probably also want to be running a Mana Flask, just in case that's not enough. If you're only using a 3 or 4 link Ice Nova, those mana regen nodes and clarity should be enough. <clears throat> uh, the next breakpoint, uh, after Act 4, if you have Ice Nova Frost Bolts, you will fly through the acts incredibly fast. I'd also recommend getting Spell Echo before you fight Malachi. It'll make the boss fight a lot easier. Um, and in the third lab, that's the next major transition to look out for, which you'll get right around the end of the axe before you fight Catawba. This is when you start power charge stacking. So at this point, you'll want to have this cluster allocated, as well as these two power charge notables. Um, this mana, or this build, drinks mana like crazy. So stacking power charges from this one and from this, and then eventually when you uh, link power charge on critical support to Ice Nova. You'll pretty much always have max power charges. And right around this point as well, um, you should have a pretty high crit chance. At this point, you can drop all of the chance to freeze nodes, which you can see when we swap to the build for, or swap to the tree for early maps. We drop all of these chance to freeze nodes because we don't need those anymore. Um, Cold damage critical hits have a 100% chance to freeze inherently. Uh, so once your crit chance is high enough, you'll pretty much always be freezing enemies. The next major breakpoint to look out for is when you get your six link Ice Nova. All right, so here we've got the early maps tree. Uh, you'll want probably want Eldritch Battery and an Energy Leech node. I'll leave that up to you. You only need Energy Leech if you're also taking Mind Over Matter with Eldritch Battery. Um, but without Eldritch Battery, you can see your mana cost per second is 108, which is a lie. Uh, it's actually twice that, since this is what it would be if you were just casting Ice Nova yourself, uh, which means that you cast twi you only cast half as fast as you do when you're casting out Frost Bolts, since you're also echoing. But as I said earlier, the, those are echoing off of the Frost Bolts, so you're casting twice as fast, which means it's actually using twice this amount of mana. Right around when you get a six link, you're gonna wanna put a note or put a point in Eldritch Battery, probably a point in Energy Shield Leech, and a point in Mind, o Mind Over Matter. These two, it depends on how much Energy Shield you have. As you can see in my tree here, I have quite a bit, and it would be much nicer if that was also helping to protect my health. So Mind Over Matter, your Energy Shield will still be protecting your health somewhat, and this helps you to still be able to cast when you are taking large hits. You may want to go all the way to this notable here, depending on how hard you're getting hit and how well you're recovering your energy shield. I would leave that to your discretion. Um, the other option, which I'll just show you here in the game. So right now I've got Eldritch Battery allocated. Take that out. You can swap out one of these flasks for a mana flask like this one. It's got 20% quality, it's got 33% reduced recovery rate, so it recovers over a long period of time. And you can throw in <coughs> clarity, which means that you're going to be down one major aura and you're going to be down another useful flask. But then you won't need to use Eldritch Battery anymore. You'll just have to drink from the mana flask occasionally, and you won't have any mana problems. All right, the next thing I want to cover is the flask setup that you're going to want to try and go for throughout maps. You'll want either used when charges reach full or reused at the end of this flask's effect, depending on what you prefer. 
I like used when charges reach full because that means I don't have to remember to use my flasks at the beginning of the map. Um, but probably want the most important ones for sure are granite flask and diamond flask. Uh, this is good for crit chance. This is good for armor. But probably want four effects. You want increased cast speed, increased armor, increased critical strike chance. You can swap out quicksilver for silver. You can swap out jade for silver. You can customize these two flasks however you want. I threw in jade with increased evasion ratings for a little bit more survivability. But again, it's up to you. Um, for the aura setup, I'm currently running Zealotry and Hatred along with Herald of Ice. You can do the most important one is Zealotry along with Herald of Ice. You can swap out Hatred for Haste. That'll help you move faster. It's a little bit less DPS, but not much. Uh, it does impact your mana more, but if you're running Eldritch Battery, that's not as important. You can also use Determination if you want to be tankier. The last couple breakpoints I want to talk about is mana reservation efficiency so that you can run Eldritch Battery and still have these ores activated. As you can see, I'm left with 9 mana when I have them all activated. To get to this point, you'll want to take this mana reservation mastery. Uh, you'll want this node right here for increased mana reservation efficiency of skills. And then either on your helmet or your chest, you can use a cheap screaming essence for mana reservation efficiency. It doesn't matter which piece of gear you put it on. Um, another option is to path up here to these mana reservation efficiency nodes here. Uh, you'll be taking these eventually anyway. Uh, just it's up to you on how you want to path through the tree. But this, since we're using Eldritch Batter, we don't need any mana. Nine mana is enough. Uh, one other thing to note when you're using Eldritch Battery, uh, this this notable here, Forbidden Power, it gives you power charges after spending a total of 200 mana. The energy Shield doesn't count as mana, so your power charge ramping is a little bit slower. It's not too bad, especially once you get power charge on critical support. This lets you get to max power charges when you're doing boss fights. And the last break point I want to talk about is when you start going low life. I don't have that set up right now. I still only got 3,000 life and, like I said, just finished going through the campaign, so it'll be a while yet. Right around level 90 or so is probably when you'll want to start doing that. You'll hopefully have, you'll want to have at least 4,000 life before you start going low life along with some energy shield. You'll want the uniques that are listed in the path of building. Um, Utula's hunger helps a ton if you can get it set up so that you don't have life on anything else. That'll give you a little bit over 5,000 life, which is pretty comfy for a low life setup. And then at that point, here, I'll just off the path building real quick. Once you do the low life setup, I'm guessing it's probably going to be, depending on prices of some of these uniques, you don't need Polaric Devastation. It's, it's nice, but you don't have to have it. You can swap to low life without it. But I'm guessing it's probably going to be between 5 and 10 divines to make this swap. Maybe as high as 15, depending on price for like, things like Ralakash Boots, Tula's Hunger, uh, Badge of the Brotherhood. Uh, Tool Fall, that's another one that it's nice to have. You don't need to have it. Swap these to low life. As you can see, your DPS, once you make the swap, for how cheap it is, is incredibly high. Um, Tankiness is also pretty good. If you disable Immortal Call, so say you get hit and then you get hit again, your tankiness isn't quite as good. Your Fizz Max hit is pretty bad. The only way around that really is getting more armor and more block chance. As you can see, we've got max spell block here, but physical damage and chaos damage are the two weaknesses to this build at low budget. Once you get a Mage Blood or you get some other Cluster Jewels or something else to help with tankiness that goes away somewhat. Uh, last, I want to show me just doing a tier 16 map. This is just one I grabbed out of my stash through an alchemy orb at. Like I said, I'm still only level 68, so at this point, it'll be a lot stronger. This is just me simulating somewhat attainable gear, especially through uh, maps. Hopefully by the time you hit tier 16 maps, you have way better gear than this. A lot of this, especially this amulet, is just trash gear. Um, the important thing is to have a good wand. Void Battery is 
not the best. Uh, Toolfall is by far the best. Toolborn is also better than Void Battery in most cases, uh, at least until you swap to using the other uniques. So I'll go ahead and load in this map real quick. Again, fresh out of the axe, me just throwing out a little bit better gear. You'll see that pretty much just melt everything in the map. The tankiness leaves something to be desired. It's not not gonna die in one hit by any means, but you do die fairly quick. Which again, I'm only level 68, so by the time you're getting to tier 16 maps, it'll look much better than this. Another thing to watch out for early on, especially for the budget version of this build, is stuns. Uh, that's probably the biggest killer of me as I've done my testing is getting stunned. I decided to take some some stun and block recovery nodes in the passive tree, as well as being able to ignore um, stuns while casting. That's helped quite a bit. Alright, so I decided to cut the showcase a little bit short. There wasn't a whole lot to see there other than me just killing stuff and then dying to the map boss, because, again, only level 68 still, using low-level gems. My gems have no quality. My gear is trash. Yeah, you know, usual. Hopefully by the time you hit tier 16 maps, you'll have way better gear, better level gems, uh, higher level. Let me know if you have any questions about the build in the comments below. Always happy to answer questions. Always happy to help as I can. Thanks for watching.